evolution of the immune system. And uh, what I want to talk about is uh, these fake sites that we've evolved. Uh, here's a, one called a dendritic cell. This is a, a macrophage, similar to a dendritic cell. And there, one of the major players we've got uh, for engulfing bacteria, destroying them, destroying viruses. And they've undergone innovations during the period of, an, uh, of evolution. So in the last 500 million years, they've not undergone some major innovations. The way they deal with the antigen, they don't just destroy the antigen, they're able to display antigen to the rest of the immune system. And we'll see that 500 million years ago, around about the time of the camp, after the Cambrian explosion, it was a marvellous thing happening to the immune system. We didn't just have simple phagocytes destroying bacteria and viruses. We evolved ways to display antigen to the rest of the immune system so that these new cells uh, called lymphocytes, which are type of white blood cell, could become excited and then do something about infections. Back in time, 500 million years ago, around about the time of the Cambrian explosion, something wonderful happened. We got various types of immunity. We became specialised. Our immune systems became specialised. We got innate as the more primitive form of immunity, but still relatively recent. And this adaptive immunity arose on the scene. And adaptive immunity is what we possess as mammals, but even fishes have it. And what essentially adaptive immunity means is that we can be vaccinated. If we get sick with something and recover, we retain a memory of, of those organisms that attacked us and we're able to respond much more rapidly the next time we encounter them. And we can only do that with the adaptive immune system. The innate is not specific enough or adaptive enough to perform that function. So this is the innate system. If we've got the foe here, this is a single bacterium, and the host cell here under attack, let's imagine the whole organism is under attack, which is look at a single cell. The host cell has got some little receptors on, we call toll-like receptors, or TLR for short, and these are part of the innate immune response, and they're able to detect parts of the, of the microbe that the microbe cannot afford to mutate or change. So this point in time, which has occurred, we think occurred very rapidly, about 500 million years ago, was the arrival of the adaptive immune response. And what those white blood cells, those big eaters, the phagocytes did, instead of just eating microbes, they evolved ways to display little remnants from the destroyed bug on their surface. And this display system is a way they display remnants of microbes to other cells of the immune system to alert other cells that something is amiss and that the other cells should become activated. They should become angry and do something about the problem. So what we find also at this time is another thing happened. The phagocytes learnt to display to these cells called lymphocytes. And these are essentially are a type of white blood cell that are antigen specific. They're highly diverse. We've got a great variety of them. They're antigen specific. And it's an anticipatory system. We're anticipating what the microbes might throw at us with a random array of lymphocytes that are displaying different antigen receptors. So two important things. This display system occurred, displaying remnants of the destroyed microbes, and the appearance of these lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell, that are antigen specific. So who got this? Well, the jawed fishes did, and everything that came from them, these Darwin up there, representing man, the chimps. This is quite a, a New Zealand uh, flavoured slide. Kiwis there, birds. So everywhere around this red line here, these so-called high organisms, which started with the jawed fishes, got this type of adaptive immune system. The others missed out. <coughs> so these simple organisms here are really existing on a type of innate response here. And I draw your attention to the jawless fishes. We always thought the jawless fishes missed out. So these are the, the first evolving jawed fishes. And these are the fishes that got the adaptive immune system. And when you look at a trout nowadays, fish or trout out of the stream, it looks quite dissimilar to us but actually the immune system is very similar to ours. It has lymphocytes that expand a 
upon contact of antigen that has a memory response. Yes, you can vaccinate trout should you wish to. And in the animal letter, if you're wandering to the end of the passage, you can see a jawed fish here and a jawless fish there, a hagfish there. And that is the one that just missed out on the adaptive immune system that we've got. Okay, the jawed fishes carry this adaptive immune system when they crawl onto the land. So when the fishes started doing press ups on their fins, and walked, wandered onto the land. From, from then we've got the reptiles and dinosaurs, birds, and mammals. And the, we carry the same immune system that these first jawed fishes had. So that's where it came from. In mammals, one of our close relatives, share the same immune system as the jawed fishes. It's very, very similar. And once again, the animal attic is near the door. And the close relatives. <laughs> okay, so the question is the urchins, sea urchins, you'll find that they've compensated. So if you look at a sea urchin, it's very specialised and it's an, an innate system. It doesn't have 10 tolerant receptors like we've got, it's got 220. So I just want to thank, uh, especially. Rosalind Kip for organising the day of immunology that we have in Otago <coughs> and for inviting me to speak and thank you for your attention.